Today's discussion is inspired by the story of the dedication derived from the Talmud and several biblical and apocryphal writings and the inspiration for the Feast of Dedication or Festival of Lights, which we also know as Hanukkah. With the traditions of light and gift giving and the dates which usually fall in December, we have a tendency to draw parallels between Hanukkah and Christmas. But Hanukkah focuses primarily on an energy of thanksgiving, more akin to the holiday we just finished celebrating. Either way, it's worthy of a closer look. The metaphysical meanings shared in today's discussion are primarily from Kabbalah.com and the Unity Publications, the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, and the Revealing Word. Here is the story of Hanukkah, as recounted on the website Chabad.org. Now the Maccabees returned to Jerusalem to liberate it. They entered the temple and cleared it of the idols placed there by the Syrian vandals. Judah and his followers built a new altar, which he dedicated on the 25th day of the month of Kislev. Since the golden menorah had been stolen by the Syrians, the Maccabees now made one of cheap, cheaper metal. When they wanted to light it, they found only one small cruise of pure oil bearing the seal of the high priest Yochanan. It was sufficient to light for only one day, but by a miracle of God, it continued to burn for eight days until new oil was made available. That miracle proved that God had again taken the people under protection. In memory of this, our sages appointed these eight days for annual thanksgiving and for lighting of candles. And thus is the origin of Hanukkah. Do you trust in the light? In this earthly life, we experience so many things that trigger negative emotions like fear, doubt, worry, anxiety, and angst. But where do these emotions come from? When things are happening in a way that conflicts with our expectations, we tend to get frustrated or scared. This then triggers that fight or flight instinct that's programmed into our physical being. But we have to remember that we don't have to respond that way. We can trust in the light of the love of God energy and use our own expression of love and light to transmute any situation, no matter how challenging it might seem. December 10th begins this year's celebration of Hanukkah, the eight-day Jewish festival of lights. Many folks have heard the story about how a day's worth of oil managed to keep the lamp lit for a miraculous eight days but the holiday is about much more than a miraculous lamp. It is about trusting in our own power as an expression of God's light to overcome negativity and oppression, both physically and spiritually. There was a time when the land of Israel was under the rule of the Syrian Greek Empire. The ruler of this region, Antioch IV, was also known as Epiphanes, which means the beloved of the gods meaning he had the favor of the gods in his rule. The people of the empire referred to him as Epimenes, meaning madman, which might reveal a little bit about how he ruled. Antioch wanted everyone in his kingdom to do things his way and to follow the same religious beliefs. He accomplished this by outlawing any practice of Judaism and interfering with the activities of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. He was also at war against Egypt, and while he was off fighting, the Romans interfered with his efforts. Rumors circulated back in Israel that Antioch had been killed. This inspired the people to rebel against the local leaders who were imposing on their lives. Antioch came back from his war, angry about the Romans' interference, and even angrier when he heard about the rebellion at home. He began a killing spree to wipe out the Jewish people. He also enacted severe laws that forbade worship. He destroyed sacred documents and banned many of the rituals that were so important in the lives of the Jewish people. Some of the people decided that they'd rather fight than switch and rebelled even harder, resulting in the death or expulsion of Syrian officers. The account of our story on Chabad.org goes on to explain, 
The Maccabees were a band of Jewish freedom fighters who freed Judea from the Syrian Greek occupiers. The word Maccabee is an acronym for the Hebrew words, which mean, who is like you among all powers, God. In other words, expressing the power of God within them to defend what is right. Led by Judah the Maccabee and his four brothers, they trounced the Greek interlopers and restored the Holy Temple in Jerusalem to the service of God. Their victory is celebrated during the holiday of Hanukkah. Now, as we've discussed before, every name, place, and situation in Scripture reflects aspects of our path of spiritual unfoldment, not only in the context of humanity as a whole, but also for each one of us individually. The Maccabees represent mutual love and bestowal or honor. Judah means praise of God and represents a mental attitude of Christ consciousness leading to greater expression of divine power. Jerusalem means dwelling of peace and it represents a place of peace in our consciousness. Syria represents our inner intellectual pride and Greek represents our egoistic desires. The priest Yochanan, it's a variation of the name John, means God bestows mercifully, representing the abundance and generosity of spirit. The eight days represent a cycle of completion. Several Jewish customs center around a period of eight days, including Passover. In general, the number eight in scripture represents a new beginning, meaning a new order or creation. The temple represents the regenerated body of man, which when he attains it, he will never leave again. This enduring temple is built in the understanding of spirit as the one and only cause of all things. Hanukkah is the beginning of our experience of spiritual reality, the initial crossing of the barrier between physical, egoistic, and spiritual, altruistic principles. These meanings are reflected in the story of the Maccabees and the Greeks they were fighting against. Professor Michael Leitman of the B'nai Baruch Kabbalah Education and Research Institute explains, the war at Hanukkah is an inner war on the barrier between the physical and spiritual worlds. In other words, egoistic powers versus those of unity, love, and honor. Our egoistic desires and thoughts are what stand between us and our sense of eternity, harmony, and wholeness, which is what we rejoice in when we win the war that Hanukkah symbolizes. Returning to our story, during this time of oppression, all of the religious artifacts had been destroyed, so there were no menorahs to light. Most of the sacred oil had been destroyed, and they could only find one cruise of oil that had been blessed. They lighted it, not expecting it to burn for long, but miraculously, it lasted for eight days, long enough for them to replenish their supply. Was that a miracle? Well, let's see as we take a look at the story again through a metaphysical eye. Intellectual pride and selfish desires, represented by the Syrian Greeks, have no understanding of spiritual truth, represented by Israel and thus seek to wage a war against spiritual thoughts of the heart. The power of mutual love, the Maccabees, inspired by divine power, Judah, steps forth to restore the understanding of spiritual truth, the clearing of the temple, conquer selfish pride and desire, the Syrian Greeks, and restore peace, as in Jerusalem. As we recognize the abundance of God's spiritual light, Yochanan, we recognize and appreciate our blessings, Judah, and in turn express our own light, the oil lamp. This renewed outlook ends a cycle of self-doubt, the eight days, and begins a time of new strength, the restored temple, which establishes a new pattern or tradition of hope and giving rather than selfish motivations which is the tradition of Hanukkah. 
The people of Israel had to trust in the light, literally, that the oil in the lamp would continue to last was for, would last for as long as was needed. The oil represents not only the abundance of the universe, but also our own state of consciousness. By trusting, the people were able to overcome a consciousness of lack and tap into the abundance that was always there for them. And this is something we can all do. Have you ever had an experience where time seemed to fold and despite the perception of not enough time, you ended up with time left over? Have you ever experienced running short on something you need, but then somehow you managed with what you had? Have you ever thought you'd never be able to, to accomplish a long list of tasks, but somehow it wasn't as challenging as you thought it was going to be? Have you ever wondered how you were going to be able to pay a bill on time, and then suddenly mon money came to you from an unexpected source? Have you ever thought you'd be stranded by a snowstorm when you really needed to be somewhere, but somehow the temperatures stayed above freezing and all you got was rain? These are all examples of tapping into universal substance, the abundance we all have access to. The menorah is the symbol of this abundance. I remember a business trip where I left a meeting in New Jersey in the late afternoon, and I had to drive to Northern Virginia to serve at church that evening. I barely had time to make it home to my house in Maryland, much less drive all the way around DC during rush hour to get to Virginia. The whole way, I was visualizing a clear path and picturing the clock slowing down so I could make better use of the time that I had. The whole way, I was using the power of thought to bend time. I not only made it quickly through several cities that are normally very congested at rush hour, I arrived at my destination and half an hour earlier than I needed to be there. There was another experience I had at work where I had a certain amount of time to discuss a lot of material to our client. It was like making a half an hour Reader's Digest condensed version of a two hour presentation. The client had lots of questions, which was slowing things down even more. We probably should have scheduled at least an hour, but we had to manage with the time that we had. There was another group waiting for the next presentation. So I asked if I could just have 10 extra minutes, just 10 more minutes. We got through all of the material I needed to cover, plus every question that the group had for me, and we still had five minutes to spare. We were all amazed. I can't explain it. I can only tell you that it happened. I trusted in the light. I had a clear vision of what I needed to accomplish and the universe opened a path to make it happen. I'm not saying that these situations were miracles any more than I will say that one day's worth of oil burning for eight days is a miracle. I believe that everything in the universe is subject to natural law and that there's a logical scientific explanation for everything we experience, even if we don't yet have the knowledge or the insight to understand what that explanation is. Yes, things sometimes seem miraculous, but they happen because it's possible for them to happen. Trust that the infinite intelligence that pervades the universe knows what it's doing. I never stop being amazed by the possibilities. Before we conclude, let's explore the ceremony of lighting the Hanukkah, the special nine branch menorah that's used only for this occasion. Here I have a Hanukkah, this one's special to me. It was made by my father about somewhere between 60 and 70 years ago before I was born. And when, uh, I've explained to some of you that when uh, that, you know, my father was Jewish and my mother was Catholic. So we celebrated both sets of holidays. And this was the menorah that we used when I was a little boy. So it's special to me. It's also kind of special if you think about the, the story that we just heard. The golden menorah was stolen, so they had to make a new menorah out of cheaper materials. Now, how often do you ever see a menorah made out of wood? They're usually kind of fancy metal and glass and fancy materials, but this one's very basic and it's very special to me. And last year, my stepmother gave it to me as a gift in honor of my father. The ceremony of lighting the candles includes three blessings and a song. The candles are normally lit at sunset. And of course, it isn't even Hanukkah yet, and it's certainly not five o'clock. 
It's not even noon, but as Jimmy Buffett likes to remind us, it's five o'clock somewhere. I will share the blessings with you in Hebrew and in English, which are sung in reverence to the traditional image of God as a personified being. I will then explain my metaphysical interpretation of each blessing as the candles are lit. The candles represent the days of Hanukkah and are placed right to left and lift, lit left to right, beginning with the current day and working backwards. The first candle to be lit is the shamash, the helper candle, which is used to light the others. On the first night, only the shamash and the candle for the first night are lit. Each night, an additional candle is lit until the eighth night when all of the candles are lit. The first two blessings are offered each night. And of course, my candle doesn't want to light. Try this again. There we go. The first blessing, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Malech HaOlam, Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotaf Vitzivanu Lahadlik Ner Hanukkah. In English, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to kindle the Hanukkah light. Metaphysically, blessed is the universal energy that guides us all, which honors us with blessings, inspiring us to share the light within. The second blessing, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Malech HaOlam, She'asa Nisim La'avutenu Bayamim Hahem Bizman Hazeh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who performed miracles for our forefathers in those days to this time. Metaphysically, blessed is the universal energy that guides us all and which inspired and guided our ancestors to freedom. We honor our past as we celebrate our present. The third blessing is only sung on the first night of Hanukkah. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehekianu vikimanu vehigianu lizman haze. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has granted us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this occasion. Metaphysically, blessed is the universal energy that invigorates us, sustains us, and inspires us as we celebrate another season of gratitude. Finally, a song called Hanarot Halalu, which is sung following the blessings. This time, I'm only saying it in English. It's a little bit too much Hebrew for me. And trust me, you don't want to hear me sing. We kindle these lights because of our wondrous deliverance. You perform for our ancestors. During these eight days of Hanukkah, these lights are sacred. We are not to use them, but only to behold them so that their glow may rouse us to give thanks for your wondrous acts of deliverance. Metaphysically, we might say, we kindle these lights in honor of the blessings humanity has recognized over expanses of time. During the eight days of this Feast of Dedication, these lights symbolize the expression of sacred oneness we share with all. We do not use the candles for their functional purpose, Rather, we see them as a symbol of the power of light within us, the glow of which reminds us to give thanks and gratitude for all of the good we experience and create in the past, now, and always. The universe is abundant, and as children of the light, with the power to manifest with our thoughts and actions, we can tap into that abundance to achieve anything we need. Trust in the light. Trust in yourself. Trust in the creative force of God that expresses within you. Let your love and light conquer selfish pride and desire. 
Clear the temple of your mind of all doubt, worry, fear, and negativity, and give yourself space to shine abundantly. The more you work with the flow of the universe, the more it will be able to work with you to accomplish whatever it is you need. Not always what you want or the way you want it, but always what serves your highest good. And when you receive it, remember the reason for Hanukkah and give thanks and celebrate what you have created. Shalom.